Sussex's Chris Jordan hit the biggest score of his career as he and Centurion Michael Yardy turned a slippery position into a very good one on the second day of the LV County Championship match with Derbyshire in Derby. The home side had lost two late wickets on the first evening to put Sussex ahead. They then resumed on 158 for six, looking for Richard Johnson and Ross Whiteley to keep going. Whiteley couldn't in the day's fourth over and before he'd added to his overnight 12, he was brilliantly held by Joe Gatting to start Jordan's very good day rather well. We showed you a shot on day one of the ball bouncing prodigiously and the evening under covers hadn't made a lot of difference. Or so it seemed. So the home side may have been pleased to get to 200 with John Clare playing a few shots in his hour-long stay with Johnson. There was some talk before the summer that the pitches in Derby might be a touch feisty in order to help their attack. Counties have been doing that kind of thing for years. And while this one had no real demons in it, there was certainly something there for the bowler who was prepared to put his back into his art. Claren Johnson batted well in adding 52 for the eighth wicket. Their stand was ended by James Anion, who hit the base of Claire's off stump to see him on his way for 25. Next ball and Anion was celebrating again as Tim Grunewald also got a delivery which didn't really get up too much. Mark Footit denied Anion a hat-trick and then got off the mark with a straight six off Monty Panasar, who responded by having Foot caught by a diving Ben Brown next ball. Derbyshire were all out for 223, a total they may well have been happy with. Especially when this happened with the first ball of the Sussex reply. Grunewald must have been licking his lips. It was a bit of a crazy half-hour spell before lunch in which bags of boundaries were scored, Luke Wells getting one off his first delivery. He struck four more in a cameo of an innings which had seen him race to 23 off only 15 balls, but his 16th was his last as Footed struck with his 11th ball of the season. And he was in action again in his next over as Chris Nash went for the pull but found Clare in the deep, a wicket which left Sussex on 35 for two in the sixth over. Footed struck for a third time just after lunch, getting some swing to trap Rory Hamilton Brown in front to put the visitors on 47 for three. Now that 223 was looking like a good total. The point now was whether Derbyshire could sustain the pressure. Yardy bedded in, but lost Gatting at the other end as he was very well held low down by the bowler Clare to depart for 13. Yardy's role had become an even more important one because Ed Joyce was not at the ground due to personal reasons. The former captain, who handed over the reins to Joyce during a troubled season last year, mixed a solid defence with some expansive drives as he and Brown brought up the 100. But it was Derbyshire on top when Brown, on a speedy 10, chipped Clare to foot it, who was having a good day in the field. The home side must have been in a confident mood. With no Joyce, they now had Sussex on 109 for five and had Jordan, a man with five fifties in 62 previous first-class innings, at the crease. Another wicket now and they would have felt very confident of securing an important first innings advantage, but Jordan reacted by going for some shots. Yardy too was excellent. He's played some important innings for his county over the years and this one would have been right up there. His seventh four took into his 50 off 78 deliveries. He was pulling out all of the shots as he really looked to be enjoying the challenge in front of him. Perhaps those captaincy responsibilities had returned. Sussex's approach was a quite extraordinary one with both batsmen perhaps deciding that there may just be a ball coming along with their name on it. So if the ball was there to be hit, then jolly well hit it. Given an approach like that, then you will need moments of fortune. And Jordan had that as he brought up the 200. And the 100 partnership was soon posted as well, with Yardy being particularly strong on anything dug in short by an attack with little experience at this first division level. In a flash, the game had turned the way of Sussex and now debutant Ali Evans was denied his maiden championship wicket as Yardy was dropped by Chesney Hughes at second slip. Jordan now really got his skates on. He'd passed 50 for the sixth time off 60 balls, but then he really started to attack as his side moved ahead with only half of their team back in the hutch. Such was the former Surrey man's momentum that he was soon into the realms he'd never been in before. His previous best score of 79 made against Essex a couple of years ago was overtaken and he wasted little time in the 80s either as he began to quickly turn this game on its head. Maybe, just maybe, 
his confidence meant that he played this shot, one which left him in some pain after being hit in the face. Before he had time to shake off the knock, a rain shower took the players off with both batsmen in the 90s. They were soon back on and Yardy got what his player deserved, a hundred. A little nudge had got him there off his 151st delivery. He struck 12 fours and had really changed the nature of this contest in partnership with Jordan. He deserved the accolades for his efforts. It really had been a very fine knock indeed. Jordan, on the other hand, was unable to go on to his first ever 100. Just eight runs short, his rhythm interrupted by the weather. He edged a rising ball from Grunewald to Whiteley. It ended a partnership of 179, made in only 32 overs with Yardy. Jordan's 92 had occupied just 105 balls. To their credit, Derbyshire hit back well right at the end of a long day. Foot it was excellent in his first game of the season. He claimed his fourth wicket when Steve McGoffin edged a slash to Dan Redfern. And he was five for the former Nottinghamshire man for the fourth time in his career as he then bowled Anion. Like Evans and Clare, foot it had gone at more than five runs per over as Sussex ended the day at 20 past seven on 328 for eight, made from just 69 overs. Yardy is still there too on 121 and he will now look to add to that on day three and to his side's lead, which currently sits at 105.